I received in my interposer to hopefully upgrade my 286 to a 386SX. So this small circuit board or interposer will connect into my 286 system board and give me a 386SX on that PCB. And as I've looked at the schematics for the 286 and the 386SX, you know, the majority of those signals are, are direct connections and it seems pretty straightforward. But then there are some signals that I'm not exactly sure what that's going to look like before I'm done. My preliminary research indicated for sure I need to come up with this S1 and S0 signal. And I could do that using the MIO, DC, and WR and you know, wasn't exactly sure what that's going to end up looking like. And there's probably some other stuff I'm going to need. And by the end of this video, I, I I'll think I validate that I do need more, but uh, we'll see. But on the design of this, I basically have a connection to plug into a socket on my motherboard. I have the 386SX itself, and then I put a PLD in the middle. Specifically, I'm using a GAL 16V8D. So step one, I got to pull my system board out and pull out the current PLCC socket for my 286. The 386 I'm using as a surface mount and for the interposer, I'm going to actually use a PGA style socket. So on my 286 board, I'm going to put a PGA socket. The interposer will plug into that and then I'll have a surface mount 386 sitting on top of it. So then I continue to get this small PCB assembled. And I would say it's a little tricky getting the 386SX soldered onto this PCB. So I'm not great at the surface mount work here, uh, but I just used a hot plate. And on that hot plate, I basically I got my 386SX placed. I then did a little bit of cleanup with the soldering iron. And then I went through and applied all of the capacitors, the surface mount capacitors. So I've got a four tantalum a little bit larger capacitors and then a bunch of just small ceramic capacitors. Once that's done, of course, I then have to get all the different uh, pin headers put into that so I can plug it into my 286 board into that PGA socket. And then I put in a socket in the center for this PLD, the, the gal that I'll be using. I then program the PLD with the logic to generate the S0, S1 added that PLD to the PCB and plugged in the interposer into my 286 board. I then fired up the system to see what kind of output I'd get and was not getting the output that I'm looking for. Did some initial troubleshooting, found some things that were an issue. So one of them is that the PLD that I'm using, I forgot to connect a VCC and ground to that for some reason in my schematic. So I quickly added bodge wires for that. I also assembled a second interposer without a hot plate just to make sure I wasn't overheating that 386SX in any way. I also found another signal that on the 386 probably needs to be pulled up with the resistor, so I added a pull up for that. But I'm not still not getting what I'm looking for on the output. And I did look at deeper into the S0, S1 generator, and I did notice it suggested that it has to be latched with the clock. I'm also doing some reading to see if this WS1, WS2 for weight state information is needed. And it seems like I do need to come back and think through this and see if I need to have this weight state support. I think I do at this point. So I'm gonna have to work on that and understand what I need to do for that. What I would point out is that in the hardware design guide for the 386, there is this weight state generator logic also that feeds into the S0, S1 generator logic. And so I have to see if I can figure out how to get all of that running on my PLT, which I think is possible, but I just have parts of this that are, are unknown. They're not clear to me and I'm not finding good detail for them yet. For example, I, I do have to clean up and understand the clock. So there are three different clocks that I need to work with. There's a clock, there's a P clock, and there's a clock two. And from the documentation from Intel, it seems like clock two is the full speed system bus type of clock. So in my case, I've typically been running that at 20 megahertz, and that would be my clock two. Clock then would be what the processor internally runs at, which would be half of that, which would be a 10 megahertz. 
And then this documentation I've been reading in the hardware design guide is talking about P-clock also, and that should be half of clock. So I have to validate, is that really the case? Is P-clock really so, supposed to be a quarter of my bus speed? In other words, 20 for my bus, 10 down to the processor, and 5 for P-clock. Uh, and it's interesting, in this graphic from that design guide, they're referencing both clock and P-clock. And in other parts of the design guide, they do reference uh, clock being half the speed of uh, clock two. So I need to just validate that I'm understanding clock two, clock, and p-clock correctly. Also, this is referencing a signal down here called ADSO. Well, that is an output of the 82384, which is generating the clock, the clock two, and this ADSO. I don't have one of those. I've not been able to find them to source, although today I did find one uh, available that are $80 each, and I'm not going to spend $80 for that chip. So I'm trying to build that logic myself, uh, figuring out at least what that logic needs to do to generate my clock, clock two, and then this P clock, and make sure I've got all of that figured out properly along with this ADSO. So ADSO is being generated by this clock generator. Uh, now ADS is coming in, that comes from the 386SX into that out as ADSO. But this wait state generator is requiring ADSO, which tells me I now have to figure out how to start building the logic for the 82384. I'm going to need that for my 386DX build anyways, so this is going to kind of force me, I think, to get over and, and spend a little time on understanding this 82384, what comes in, what goes out, and see if I can get that logic so that I can use it here on this little 386SX upgrade. But then there's something else. As I look at this, they point to another one of these uh, PAL chips, the 16R8 here. And I'm not finding details for what actually goes in that. So maybe it's there in the hardware design guide. And I just haven't found it yet. But they're referencing that there is this PAL chip. And that I'm going to bring in certain signals. And out comes this WS2 and ready that I'm going to use in my system. So I need to just understand that a little bit better. So I've got a bunch of reading to do. I might have some posts uh, that I'll, I'll put out there, maybe with questions, if, if anybody has any ideas on some of this. But if I can get the weight state generator logic figured out, I can then feed that into the S0, S1 generator logic and see if between all of that, I can get this output logic working correctly. That's my guess of where my challenge is on this 386SX upgrade is just making sure that I have proper S0, S1, and uh, maybe in this case, this uh, ready signal. I, I might need to double check that I'm looking at that correctly and sending the right signal out to my system. Or how does that interplay with my, my current 286 build, which already does have a ready signal. So I've got some work to do there. Most of it is just trying to find references like what goes in this this IC labeled 16R8 here on the weight state generator and then getting my S0, S1 fully flushed out. So that gets me to this for my current state of my system board. I have that socket in place. I then have the upgrade interposer snapped into that socket with my PLD ready to be updated with improved glue logic. I then have an adapter also for my 286 so that I can plug in the PLCC 286 and snap it into the PGA socket that I have on my system board. So I can now easily go back and forth between my 286 and this attempt at a 386SX upgrade. And if the upgrade doesn't work, I just snap my 286 back in. I can play around with the 386 upgrade when I get time. But hopefully I'll get to the point where that 386SX upgrade is workable in this system. So to be continued on this, uh, plenty of research left on my part. So I've got some reading to do. I'll do some experimenting. I'm going to go through and validate all of the signals and just connectivity, make sure I don't have any soldering issues. But plenty, plenty for me to do in the coming weeks to try to get this 
386SX running here. So stay tuned, more to come.